Welcome to Dream Loudly, an I'm Possible original show presented by the Dream Loudly Foundation, providing resources and education for players, trainers, and coaches around the world. We are your hosts, Michael Lancaster and Bryce Stanhope. And on this show, we're going to be going over all kinds of resources, tips, methods, everything that can help players, trainers, and coaches pursue their dreams. On this episode, we simply wanted to just go over what it means to be an I'm Possible trainer. This is one of the few times on this show that we'll actually talk about things very specific to I'm Possible, but because obviously we certify trainers and, and uh, coaches all over the world, this is a, a really an issue that we wanted to discuss or a topic that we wanted to discuss. And so one of the main things, Bryce, that, that I wanted to kind of get into in here is just how we've always talked about how anyone can be a trainer. Yeah, and I think that's something that people struggle to really understand from just a standpoint of it's all about what you know and, and we've always talked about this like the playing resumes all, all of the stuff about like oh you are a top d1 player you're this is this we've seen so many players that were amazing players that really haven't panned out to be great trainers right now on the other side we've seen play, people who are in all honestly terrible players like even just watching people play and it's just like okay like they play a little but they're phenomenal trainers. They, yeah. know, they know how to connect with players. They know how to teach. They're deep in the knowledge. They're truly, truly studying the game from a skill perspective. And I think that's the part that everybody needs to understand is like, can there be advantages to being a higher level player? Yeah, you can talk about experiences, you know certain spots on the floor this is, but when we're talking from a truly skill perspective, that's about knowledge. Like, do you understand full work? Do you know angles of the feet? Do you know how players are supposed to step? So, similar, and I always talk about this, similar to what like a track coach would do with a sprinter. That track coach probably isn't the fastest person in the world, but if he knows your technique, how your hands need to be, how your feet should be hitting the floor, you know, he can teach that. He doesn't have to be the fastest person in the world to be a track coach. Because so, you understand the technique at that point. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times that, that was the way it was when we were playing, yeah. is the, the types of trainers that were out there were typically people who mm -hmm. were good players. Yep. And we've seen it over and over and over again where those types of trainers don't necessarily do that well with players because yeah. they only know what worked for them. They yep. don't know how to reach someone who doesn't have their same body type or their same style. Yep. And we see that a lot of times, of course, in the shooting world where you teach yeah. players to shoot only the way that you, sh that you, you shot it yeah. but, and you don't really understand how it can translate to others. But really, that's something that I think is dying. Yeah. Where people, where, where players are no longer looking at us or looking to us simply because we are good players. Yeah, for sure. You know, it, it has its advantages, of course, when you can say, I did this and I accomplished this and you can gain some respect from that. But nowadays, because the training uh, world has been kind of the, the path has been blazed, yeah. players just simply want to know what you can give them as far as knowledge, techniques, and methods. Yeah. And that's what I love about what we do at I'm Possible Training is yep. we can literally teach anyone how to be a trainer. Yeah. You can be someone who literally just loves the game of basketball, mm -hmm. just a, you know, a, a dad who loves the sport, yeah. and become a trainer. And we can show you exactly how to do that. And I, I think that's sometimes even more beneficial than being somebody – you know, you've gone through the years of the grind, you've played games, you're even a little probably burnt out at this point versus somebody who's just truly just passionate about what they're doing. Because passion's gonna drive the learning, passion's gonna drive, you know, that itch to get up and, you know, really work on like, like, okay, what do I know? How can I make players better? What can I do just to get this player just that little bit better in the process? And I think that's the difference when you have a passionate trainer versus somebody who's a player. Um, and I think we all went to those camps. Like you went to, you know, Central Michigan's camp, stuff like that. Worked with players who were like, you know, bigger names from those areas. We had one big player from the high school I went to, worked out with him. It was the same thing that everybody else did. Like it was no different. Um, so I think that's the biggest difference is, is just – People who are truly passionate and will dive into the learning process can be a skill trainer. Right. And all it, all it really takes is your willingness to learn yeah, at this absolutely. point. And that's what we help people do. And yeah. I'll also just say this. You also don't have to be a great coach. No. You know, a lot of times I've even seen trainers recently talking about how training and coaching is basically, you know, they're linked. Hand in hand. Yeah. But in, in, in where they're coming from the, the position of a game situational type trainer. And so we probably need to take a little bit of time here to discuss the differences between yeah. what we do with skill enhancement training and what coaches do with game situation training. Yeah. 
Because if I'm going to be a game situational trainer, yes, it helps to have experience either yeah. as a coach or as a player because you're talking about specific reads and, and things of that nature. Well, we're talking about things from a different perspective. We're mm -hmm. talking about the details of footwork, shooting, finishing, ball handling. And so we're going yeah. to dive into more of the raw techniques of yep. things, the body positions of things, and those types of things only require knowledge. Yeah. And that's what we do such a good job with teaching uh, coaches and trainers to yeah. do is mimic those movements. Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily be a great demonstrator to do that. Yeah. And so that's how we can really allow anyone to be a trainer and teach yeah. anyone to be a trainer because all they really have to do is learn how to teach. Yeah. I think the really cool thing that I've seen with trainers is like you kind of have two different crops of trainers right now. You have these young guys who just love the sport coming in. 20 to 25 to 30 years old, a lot of energy, still out there dribbling, still playing pickup. But then I've also seen this wave of, you know, 40s into their 50s that just love basketball. Maybe they've been doing something else their entire life, but they're kind of looking for that next stepping stone in their life. You know, they're wanting to go from, okay, I do, I've always done this full time or like I had a business, but I just love basketball so much. Um, and we, we, we know this, like I, I think we have more full time trainers within Impossible than right. anybody else easily and, and i think that's the separation with what we do is because there's so much learning there's so much they can go to to further their knowledge further their understanding even just business that we have people at all levels young old taking that next step and becoming a full-time skill trainer yeah and, and literally let's let's take a second to back up really quick because obviously we're talking about becoming a trainer yeah and so we're coming from the angle right now of our actual trainer certification yep so at impossible training we are the world's leader in basketball trainer certification mm -hmm. and one of the things that makes us really re unique is we certify trainers according to skill enhancement so if someone's a certified impossible trainer it means they've gone through the nuts and bolts the education mm -hmm. of what's skill enhancement actually is. And so when someone goes through our certification process, why don't you just really quickly explain how that rolls? Yeah, so the certification process, they're gonna first go through the certification test. So they're gonna, they're gonna have the stuff to learn from, it's gonna take them through what I like to call a lot of the meat and potatoes of what we expect an I'm possible trainer to understand. Some of this is stuff from terminologies, some of this is stuff from, you know, even how to go about running a workout. Like making sure that if you have a big group, you know, everybody has a ball if possible. No one's waiting in lines. Everything's just flowing well. We really want to cover all bases with that. Because again, the, the branding has gotten so big and so powerful. There is a certain level of expectation that most people are going to have coming in to work out with somebody who's an I'm possible trainer. They're going to be knowledgeable. They're going to run a good, clean, smooth workout. Those things are going to be in place. After they go through that, they're gonna take the test. The test is gonna be basically going through everything they just learned, making sure they know it, making sure that they, they actually went through and really read and study like any test would be. Um, and then lastly is gonna be the video submission test. This is gonna be us sitting down, watching them run a workout of a video that they sent to us. And it could be one player, two players, three players, four players, whatever it is. And we're never grading you based upon how good are the players Go right. on. If anything, I enjoy watching when you have terrible players. How do you teach them? How do you teach them? How are you managing somebody that, that maybe can barely dribble? Because at that point, I mean, I think that's what makes the greatest trainers on earth. And, and this is something that I do hear trainers say, which I completely agree with. Training the youth is probably the most powerful thing out there. You know, you're taking the kids from young ages who maybe just picked up a basketball. Can you teach somebody with very little ability? Versus teaching somebody who has a skill set, it's a little easier. I almost sometimes don't even have to be as in-depth because they already have a little bit of a skill set. They can really go, but taking somebody from scratch who knows nothing, that to me can really help grow a trainer. That's why we've always talked about it. Like even here, we have the little kids program. I think that little kids program of second and third graders makes a better trainer than somebody who's just training high schoolers. Right, and, that, and that's what's powerful, uh, what we have at Impossible. And mm -hmm. I like to use this as an example because out of all the trainers or organizations out there with the greatest resume, we're the only ones with that type of resume that really also teach the kids at the same yeah. level. And so that's what makes our training so powerful is we can train second graders all the way up to NBA players. And that's what the certification process allows people to learn. Yep. Um, to add to that, so they obviously can take the test. They yep. can go through that online. And I'll just quickly go through that again. So they, oh, yep. they pass our test. If they fail that test, they can take it again. Mm -hmm. It's really the testing portion is really about getting on the same page. Mm -hmm. And then once you get on the same page, you pass the test, then they do their video submission. Yep. And that becomes the most important part so we can really see yeah. how you are as a teacher. And that's the part where you literally have to pass that yeah. before you can finally make it. Yeah. You, you can still fail it 
and take it again. But yeah. you cannot become an impossible trainer no. until you pass the video submission unless you go to our training university and you do it in person. Yeah. So we do have trainers who travel all the way from around the world, all around the country to attend training university yep. every year to go through a week of learning with you and I and really go through not only the information on that test, but obviously we dive in even deeper. And that program yeah. is so good that if they go through that process, we can actually teach them properly and they pass the test, then they're also eligible without having to go through that video submission. Yep. So I think that's a really important yeah. part of it. And that, 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 part, that part's a fun part too, because obviously if you're coming in, you know, it's easier to ask questions. You can see us train. We have multiples training here at one time. So that part is definitely really nice because it allows everybody to kind of see how we would do it essentially. Right. Um, and then you can always build your own flow off of what you're seeing us do as well. And I'd say that has almost become as popular as our online, which is yeah, pretty interesting. For, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, people, people have been wanting to dive in so much deeper because people are understanding. And a lot of this is just what we've done over the years. Is like People understand that knowledge is the power. Knowledge is the key. Like People who are coming to train with you, people, I think parents are getting smarter at being able to kind of – see at times like like okay this trainer really knows what they're talking about they speak it well they speak it with conviction like they really have that versus i you know it, it's almost noticeable when somebody's not as confident in what they're teaching from a knowledge perspective where we've had trainers come and do that too they look amazing when they demonstrate but right. then when they go to teach it's just not quite there right. um which you know most of demonstration stuff nowadays not to say it's been completely played out like it, it helps it's it's a piece to the puzzle if you have it that's great but so many more people are looking for the knowledge on what can you teach my kid, what can you teach me as a player, versus I just watched you do a ball handling drill and I'm right. super amazed by it. Well, and this used to be, and we can move on right after this to the next portion, but yeah. you know you know, right when I started, everything mm -hmm. to me was about the ability to demonstrate. Yeah, That's where training the training world was. And I think because of that, a lot of people think they have to be able to do that in yeah. order to be a trainer. Yeah. And so... At that time, I prided myself as someone who trained NBA mm -hmm. players that I had to be more skilled than any player that I trained, yep. which put a lot of pressure on my skills to yeah. be able to stay at that, that level where my footwork had to be there, ball hand had to be there, I had to be able to shoot the lights out, yep. I had to be able to do everything in order to be able to feel like I was worthy yeah. to train the NBA yep. player. And eventually that just became not sustainable. Yeah. You know, I knew what I was putting through my body in order to get to that yep. level. And I was looking into it and saying, I'm not going to be able to do this when I'm 50 and 60. No. So this isn't a long-term plan that I have right yeah. now. And so I had to completely trust the teaching. And yep. really, that's been my best years, yep. the ability to develop players, is not demonstrating. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you demonstrate at a high level, the player just wants you to slow down anyway. Yeah, they, they can't, can't even they see, can't it. see it. It's too fast. So you might have wowed them, yeah. but you're not really teaching them. Yeah. And so to be able to mimic the movements, which we show players how to do, you know, really is just so powerful. You yeah. can really get to the detailed part of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the second part that we, we need to go over is the brand and resume of yeah. Impossible. So once someone goes through the certification process, one thing that we always talk about is right away you gain the brand and resume of Impossible yeah. training. It's like putting a stamp on it. Yeah, it's the collective yeah. resume. So yeah. even, even for me, you know, my resume of being able to train the amount of NBA players that I've trained, mm -hmm. which I don't know the exact number, let's say it's 50s or 60s, of NBA players that I've personally worked with, including NBA All-Stars and so on, my resume is never going to be as good as this collective resume. Yeah. We have so many trainers around the world that mm -hmm. are also working with NBA players who are also doing big things that yeah. collectively our organization has worked with 100 plus NBA players. Yeah. And so I don't go around telling people what my resume is. Yeah. I go around telling people what our resume is. Sure. And that's the power of being an I'm Possible trainer first and foremost is you can join in that collective brand and that resume. Yeah. And, I, and I think trainers are starting to kind of feel the power in that because obviously we've been around since, what, 2009? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've been doing this for a long time. And, I mean, so many trainers who have come on – have used the same exact tactics that we use. Tanner Lynn out in Utah is training a ton of NBA players. Ryan Buhane down in Orlando trains NBA players. And all of them are going through the exact same thing. So even if you're a trainer out in China, even if you're a trainer out in Australia, you're still part of the I'm Possible family, the branding, the same drills that you're doing with your players are the same we're doing with NBA players. It's the same, I train players locally, I train young kids in the area. It's the exact same drills. We've always talked about this. We don't train an NBA player any different than we train a young kid. So again, you can use that power as a trainer in your space, even though you may not train NBA players, you're still doing the same things that we are with it. So the branding, just the power of it and just the, the cohesiveness, you can use that for your own personal branding too. 
Right, and that's that's perfect because the next part on here is being able to keep your own brand, and that's yeah. why I think it's important when we're talking about the certification side is that we are not talking about certification just so you can join an organization. Yeah, you're not replacing what you already do. Right, there's a few organizations out there who say they certify trainers. Yeah. But really what you're doing when you're certified by them is you're joining their organization. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically able to use their name yeah, when you, you advertise. Yeah, you are their name, yeah. Yeah, you are them. Like, that's yeah. your company. We're, yeah. Our certification is a peer certification mm -hmm. in terms of when you're I'm Possible certified, yes, you can use the brand. If you wanted to stand as an I'm Possible trainer, you can do that. But you mentioned Tanner Lind. He's yeah. lacing up basketball. Ryan mm -hmm. Buhane, he's two hands basketball. Yep. And so you can have your own brand name. Yeah. And the stamp of I'm Possible is simply that you know our skill enhancement methodology. Yeah, because we still want you to be... You, like you as a person, a lot of people are very proud of their own personal branding, which you should be too. Like that's something you, you've started to build. We're just, we're just adding to it. And they might have a little bit of their own way too. Yeah. So you can be a game situational trainer, mm -hmm. but you can also be I'm Possible certified, which yeah. means you understand what we bring to the table. You understand yep. skill enhancement yep. because obviously those are two different pillars mm -hmm. of basketball. They're parallels. And so when someone's an I'm Possible certified trainer, that just simply means that they know skill enhancement. And of course, they can be their own brand too. Yep. And a big part of what we do at I'm Possible Training, so obviously we, you can get certified, you can keep your brand, you become, a, you become a trainer. The next big part is the actual weekly mentorship that we provide. Yeah. So one of the things that we've just been hitting the ground running with the past year has been weekly calls. Mm -hmm. We do five calls a week with our trainers, which is huge. So yeah. every Monday I'm taking, a, taking the call, you're doing Fridays. Fridays. We have Tanner Lind, Mark Kinnebrew, and Mercy Klein mm -hmm. all full-time successful trainers yep. who are handling a call every week to discuss yep. basketball skills, yep. drills, methodologies, principles, mm -hmm. and business. Yeah, and business too. And, and trainers can basically come onto each of those calls and ask questions, yep. which has been huge. Mm -hmm. What's been your impression on those so far? No, it's been, it's been really cool because from a standpoint of like, you know, we have a consistent flow of trainers in each call. And it, and it seems like, again, the, the trainers that are in there the most consistently are also our most successful ones. Because again, it's coming back to the diving and the knowledge. They have questions. They're trying to figure out how to keep taking the next step as a trainer. And even the next step as a business person, like we talk about, because we talk about that on there too. Um, and then a lot of the trainers, like, like, cause it depends on time of day. Some of these trainers are still, some are full time. Some are still working another gig. Um, we save all those videos for them on the back half. So a lot of them are going in later on and watching them again or rewatching them just to make sure they're absorbing all that knowledge. Yeah. And we have, we have some trainers who are obviously still part time. Yeah. And so they're more so not able to catch every live, yeah. you know, zoom call, but they're able to go in and see the archive. And yep. a lot of them have reported how helpful those have been for them yeah. because they're, they can always catch up on questions and think and topics that we're talking about, yeah. which brings up the next part is business mentorship and consulting. That's yeah. another big thing of what we do at I'm Possible Training. We've been in this business since 2009. And like you said earlier, we've helped build the most extensive list of trainers who have gone full time than yeah. any other organization that's I don't out even there. Think it's close either. It, it's it's not even close. Yeah. And so we help trainers go full time because our mission at I'm Possible is to reach as many players as possible, yeah. reach the millions of players. In order to do that, we need more trainers. Yeah. And so that's the whole reason why the trainer certification piece even began. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that is trainers have to be able to survive. Yeah. So we have to help them on the business side. Mm -hmm. we, give them their, we give them our model and we offer them consulting that they can take advantage of yeah. if they choose to really help them succeed in business. Yeah. And that's a huge part of what we do at Impossible. So yeah. we equip you on the skills and we equip you on the business. And the big part of what we do, it, but both of those could be included, is continuing education. Yeah. And the way that we do that, first and foremost, is through our I'm Possible Cloud. We have 13 checklist training programs that all of our trainers have access to where they can see us teach and they learn. They have everything that we've created in the past and they, they will have everything that we create in the future. And that continuing education is what our certification is about. Yeah, and I, and I think the nicest thing about being able to go in there and watch us teach is a lot of time that's how you start to build your flow as a trainer too. Like, I mean, we'll talk about my story another time, but when I was young, I was 19, 20, I was following you around the country, really just to watch you teach. I just helped out. Sometimes I ran groups on the side. If you were on the main court, I was on the back court. But that was the benefit in it for me was just watching somebody else teach. It's, right. like, it's like the benefit of going to like some of these bigger churches that are bringing in 
these amazing speakers, that stuff rubs off on you. Like you start to figure it out. Like, yeah, you find yourself copycatting at first, but eventually you start to find your own flow. You find the way you like to teach. You know, some people are more energetic. Some people are more teaching, like very to the point. Um, some people are more military. Um, but that's kind of how you find yourself though, is by going through watching those videos, like, oh, this is how Mike explained this. This yeah. is how Bryce explained this. And you'll find yourself saying those same things, but eventually you'll find your own way and you'll become your own trainer through that too. Yeah, and when you started, there was no video library. No. So you had to go around the country. Yeah. I had to bring you those places. Yeah. Now I wouldn't have to do it that yeah, way. Yeah, that's a good point. So now we can just simply just plug them into all the tutorials that exist. And we're talking 13 programs, yeah. which if you were to buy all those separately, it would be over $2,000 that our trainers just have. And that's, that's and, and we didn't mention this, when you're becoming an Impossible Certified Trainer, mm -hmm. that is not a certification that you just keep forever. No. And that's extremely important to talk yeah. about because a lot of times those certifications, in my opinion, are, are, are pretty much scams. Yeah, for sure. Where you attend a class and they give you a piece of paper that says you're always certified with this organization. Yeah, I talked about that. Cro CrossFit went through that. Like you could go, you could do like a weekend course of a Friday, Saturday, and you were considered CrossFit certified this, which obviously if anybody knows, it takes more than a weekend to study the human body on something right it takes time yeah and th in, in game of basketball things are always changing so yeah. if someone's an i impossible certified trainer it means they are actively involved yep. they're part of our continuous yep. education and that's a huge part of this so that's why this piece is so important yep. all of our trainers are plugged in and they're constantly being educated yeah now the other things that we do for our trainers is we basically give them the tools and resources to be successful so the next part on the list is workout templates yep now this is a newer part of our app that has been huge, but it basically allows trainers to go through our checklist mm -hmm. library, which has over 600, actually 700 skills and methods, and they're able to create their own workout templates. Yeah. And so they're able to say, all right, I did this ball handling series, I did this finishing, I did this shooting, put it all in their template, and they can basically save it for later. Yep. And a lot of trainers are relying on building those templates pretty heavy. Yeah, I think that's been a pretty cool part that I, I didn't even expect when we were putting that in there, how much trainers were going to utilize that. Because sometimes me, myself, like obviously being a part of somebody who has built the library, built that stuff, I kind of know what I'm going about like when I want to do workouts. But um, a lot of trainers have been utilizing that just because like, again, like you find a workout that flows really well together and you know you're going to assign that in the future rather than having to go through there, click them, whatever. I just know this workout's in here. It's named this and I can sign it out. So that's been a really nice feature that trainers have been using a lot. Like Brett had said out in uh, Minnesota, one of our full-time trainers, um, he has a library of just templates because they're there for the future. Right. He knows how these workouts work and he likes just the way they flow. Yeah. And we'll obviously get into it too, but the, they are able to, to save those templates and actually assign them to yep. players. Yep. And you don't always have time necessarily to go through and, and find those things again. So when you come across a workout that just flowed or, yeah. or you're really thinking about a workout you have in the future, you can create them ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and another piece of this app that we've just created is the Skill Examples Library, which yeah, I'm sick. really, really pumped about. Yeah, it's, sick. Um, it's basically, if we want to put it into these words, it's basically like a shared drive of mm -hmm. all video examples of NBA yep. players, examples of them using the skills, footwork, finishing, along with pictures that we really like to teach off of. And so it's really, it's, it's our ability to teach with film, yeah. with players, and, and trainers can simply have that library right on their app. Yeah, and, I, and, and that was something that uh, we started dabbling with a long time ago. Like, we use the TV a ton when it comes to teaching players. Um, I, I had a little bit of an injury back in the day in uh, New Jersey where I was having to rely completely on, you know, NBA footage of, like, okay, watch this player do this because I wasn't demonstrating it. Right. And, and that was back when we were still in the demonstration mode. I think that's been the coolest thing, though, is, like, you know, seeing the younger trainers, the older trainers, it doesn't matter as much now because – I can use those skill examples, even if I am an older trainer, or my body's just not feeling like moving that day. I can use a player doing it in live action to be like, hey, notice their footwork, see the angles of the feet, how that footwork, the timing, all of that stuff. It's just so easy to use those examples. And players love it too, because th those are their favorite players. Yeah, They're basically, yeah, they're learning from us breaking it down, but they're actually learning from the players that we're even stealing this stuff from. Um, so it's just a really nice gateway and play players tend to love it. They love seeing that. Yeah, and sometimes you're just in a workout and you're like, man, I know this video, yep. you know, I have a perfect example of Kyrie doing a drop. 
somewhere on my phone. Yeah, and you're trying right? to search it and find and, and, it. And, and I, there's been times where, especially when you were in New Jersey, where we were constantly going back and forth, hey, do you have that clip? Yeah, trying clip? to send stuff and it's just a pain. You know, I just got a new phone. I can't find this clip. Yep. <laughs> and now it's all on our app. Yeah, so, everything's in there. you know, if I want to go find an example of that particular footwork, I just go right to the app. I can search for it. Yep. And now I'm in a film session with my player in a live workout showing them that exact footwork that we're working yep. on. And so I think that is going to be a huge part of the app moving forward for trainers. I'm really, really excited about those yeah. examples because so much of what we're doing is detail-oriented and we rely on film. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important about skill enhancement training that people understand is that it's not just cardio. It's not yeah. just getting up shots. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. We talk about yeah. it all the time. It's a big part of basketball, yeah. but it's not what we specialize in. For sure. So if someone's coming to us, they're coming for that detail that we mm -hmm. provide as skill specialists – and so through that skill examples library, I'm able to record them, show them their footwork, and yeah. compare it to an NBA example so they can really see it. Yeah. Because a lot of times players don't really know what they look like yeah. until you show them on the TV. You think you look a lot different than what you really do. Uh, you see that with shooting a lot. They think they shoot a certain way. Then you see it on video, and they're just kind of like, ugh. Yeah, which is amazing, yeah. the technology that we have now, because yeah. we didn't have that ability all the time. No. You think that you look so good at something. You yeah. think you got it. And then you, you really don't. Yeah. And so we are always showing players the truth in yep. each and every workout. Yep. Even if it slows the workout down because we're more of working on the technique, yep. the quality, not just the quantity of reps. Mm -hmm. And so that's huge. And that brings into the other most important part of how the, our trainers can utilize the app is through the client management system that we have. Yep. So all of our certified trainers have the ability to add their players directly into their app and basically keep profiles on them. Mm -hmm. And so that has been huge. And the, the, the trainers that we have that have utilized that best have really been the ones that have yeah, done the best. By far the most successful. Um, obviously, somebody who comes to mind would be Murthy Klein, who's here with us at the World Headquarters. She's just like, organized. She runs everything to the T. She runs the system perfectly. And if you watch her train next to me and you, it's not like she's identical. She has her own flow. She has her own feel as a, as a, as a trainer. She, she's found her own way through, really like we've talked about, like running the system. Um, and I think that's been one of, the, one of the awesome things about watching her is just trainers just throughout all of I'm Possible, like they really are tuning into her Zoom. They're really tuning into like whatever she's posting on IG. I, I think outside of obviously me and you, like she's probably the trainer that people talk about the most. And, and like, I, I'm sure you'd agree with me. I think she's hand down the best female trainer easily. out there. And obviously we're talking about the skill enhancement realm, but she is easily the best yeah. skill enhancement female trainer in the world, hands down. Uh, and she's just good at everything. Mm -hmm. she, she is the type of trainer who can demonstrate, yeah. but she's a phenomenal teacher. Yeah. She understands the system. She's followed the system so well, but she's also ha you know, carved out her own way of doing it. Yeah, if you don't know who Mercy Klein is, you got to be following her. She's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but she's the type of person who, because she has so many local clients, I mean, she's training 80 to 100 yeah. players per month, where you and I are mainly training players who are traveling yeah. in different parts of the world. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when I'm training, I'm training someone who travels in from different states. Yeah. I'm seeing them one week out of the year, and then the next week I have a different set of players that are in. Yeah. And obviously, you and I are both training yeah. them. Where Mertzi's training mainly local players, and so she is heavily using that app. Yeah. Now, it's funny because the way the app is built now is built off of the system that I created before the app existed. Yeah. So the way that I started is I used to have those manila envelopes where yep. each and every single one of my clients was in there. Yep. You know, like kind of like a doctor's, you know, uh, yep. folder for each person. Yeah. So when I trained my players, I could write down and log everything that I did with them. Yeah. Which was crucial for me because if I had a player, I wanted to know my history with them. Yeah. And you're one of the only people I ever seen doing even that. Yeah. Well, it, it was huge because I'm the type of trainer who doesn't do and we're the type of trainers that, yeah. does, that don't do the same thing over and over and yeah. over again. A lot of times you go and see a, a trainer and it's literally a rerun. You're yeah. going through the exact same shots, yep. the exact same situations. And so you're kind of just getting your reps. Where I've had a lot of pros who've complimented me by saying, hey, I've trained with you for three or four years and I don't think I've ever done the same thing twice. Yeah. Well, that's because of this system is I literally have the ability to document mm -hmm. what I've done with you so I don't have to necessarily repeat yeah. that. And so we keep permanent record of the players that we train so we can make sure we keep moving with them. Yeah. That organizational structure is huge when it comes to developing a player's progress. And especially is important, I think, when you're a Mercy Klein yeah. who is relying mainly on the locals yeah. and you're, you're training 80 to 100 players a month 
how do you keep track of what you've done yeah. with them? So now through our app, it literally keeps track of everything that she's ever done. Mm -hmm. So she can see, okay, this is what I haven't done with this player yet. And so she can keep moving along that system. And, and e even if there is something in there, like say you notice a player is still struggling with X, I can always reassign that to them too. So it doesn't limit me a as a trainer. We're like, okay, I've already signed this to them once. I can assign it to them again if I really needed to. So like, hey, you know, we get a couple months down the road and, you know, whatever, you're still struggling with drops. I can reemphasize, hey, go back, spend a little bit more time on this to make sure you really got it. Um, and and it, there's definitely just so much power in that with players because really we're putting the responsibility on the players as it should. Once I teach you this, and we all know this as basketball players, you get good on your own. Right. That's our whole goal. Get you out there in your driveway, in your house, where, wherever it's got to be. Find that two to three extra days when you're not with me to do what's in there for you in the app. There's no excuses with this. Yeah, and when players come and see us, like I said, some are seeing us one week out of the year. Yeah. Well, the local players here are training three times a month because our whole system is built on not only training with us, but then going and doing it yourself yeah. on your own. Yep. We have to teach them how to train themselves. We have to teach them how to be accountable yep. and, and, and basically create basketball addicts out yep. of them. And so the app is, is, is huge that they are able to go in, they're able to see what we did with them last time. And yep. so when a trainer assigns a workout log to a player, they're basically able to say, okay, I did drop, I did, so, I did a, a first step finishing, I yep. did this and that. And when they log that, it goes right into the player's account. Mm -hmm. So that player is able to literally have permanent record of everything that was done with them. They can watch the video demonstrations um, and they can see that workout so they can continue doing it on their own. Yeah. And what we have to constantly remind our trainers of is the importance of simply encouraging your players yeah. to utilize that. Yep. Some people will say, hey, you know what, I, I just want the training. But they're missing the whole purpose of yeah. everything of just, I need to do this on my own. So it's yep. a trainer's job to be able to say, okay, here's the workout we did last time. Did you do this since then? Yeah. And I think that's why parents understand the difference of what we do so mm -hmm. well, because they can see that we actually have a system in place yeah. to hold their kids accountable. And, and, and you know this, I mean, we've been doing this for so long at this point. Um, we can tell when players are doing what they're supposed to be doing on their own. Right. Like we just had the player uh, from Mexico. He... he um, I want to say six months ago he came in, and then he came again another six yeah. months later. And the, the six-month difference of him. Ridiculous. Yeah, because he actually just, just followed the plan. He's still doing his other stuff. He's playing on teams. He's got games. He's got practices. But he's at least finding two days a week, one day a week, two days a week, doing what we did with him. And he comes back looking like a completely different person. It's multiplying. Yeah. We, you know, we have so many people who travel to us every single year. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was, it's so funny because when people are, you know, ever questioning anything that we do. Yeah. Well, we've had players who are traveling to us from around the world. I think we got to be some of the only trainers where players literally fly every year to train with yeah. in a personal setting. Yep. And they come back every single year. Yeah. We would be gone by now yeah. if this wasn't working. Yeah. But that's what I love about it is you have a player who travels in. We spend a weekend with them. We yep. spend a week with them. We give them, we basically reveal to them their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We show them what to do. They leave. They train on their own. And when they come back to us, they're a completely different player. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's not about taking credit for them because no. we're not the ones doing the work. Yeah. We just simply have the time with them and then we teach them how to do it on their own. And it's a beautiful process. And so that's what I love examples of that is yeah. when they come back and they're different. Yeah. And then we can build up that again. Mm -hmm. We see what we've already done with them. We continue working on new things. Yeah. We send them off again, and the process just completes. Yep. And so whether or not we see a player a weekend, a week, a month, or they're a local player, it's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Train with us in person. Train yourself on your own, yep. and it becomes this beautiful training and mentorship relationship. And I think it's, I think it's awesome when it, when it comes to that because, like, you know, you get so many parents that are like, man, like, my kid has no confidence. My kid has – my kid just, like, struggles with being confident on the court. You can almost guarantee they're not doing anything on their own. They're just they're either with a trainer or they're with a coach, and that's her. all that self confidence stuff is when you're doing stuff by yourself. The kid that goes home and does his math homework is usually pretty confident with math. Yeah. Or like it's the same thing. If somebody's there doing that math homework for me the whole time, like I'm not gonna build confidence in that. So if I'm actually taking that stuff, going home and doing it, and whether I'm doing it completely right, partially right, it doesn't really matter. They're spending that time with the ball in their hand, actually working on something. The confidence is gonna come with that. Yeah, and I think a lot of times it's just because people are confused. A yeah. lot of times they think they have to choose between game situational training yeah. and skill enhancement yeah. training, which mm -hmm. would take a whole different episode to yep. talk about. 
but they really need to be, be doing both. Yeah. And so that's why another reason, I should say it's another reason why they should be training our workouts on their own in their mm -hmm. own time because when they see their game situational training, they're going to get those reps. Yeah, they're going to get that. Everywhere. And I'd say that's more of the common stuff. If you're yeah. going to go into any gym in the country, you're going to see game situational training. Yeah. And that has its place. It needs to be done. But then on the skill enhancement side, they need to be carving out time on their own for those things. Mm -hmm. And if they can do both, if they can do the game situational training and then they can go home and they can do their skill enhancement training, yeah. that's when these two types of training just move parallel together. Yeah, the balance is nice. And players can reach the, the maximum amount of success. Yeah. Now, a big part of obviously everything we've talked about has been mentoring trainers. Yeah. So we have the continuing education components. We give them everything they need in their app. And then, of course, there's also the community side, mm -hmm. which we have our trainer conference every single year, yeah. which, of course, you know, you free. plan, you plan. Mm -hmm. and so it's a free conference for all of our trainers. And really, really uh, I speak at trainer conferences all over the place. Mm -hmm. Ours is phenomenal. Yeah. It's got to be the best yeah. out there. I agree. And our trainers get it for free. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what, what you've seen in the trainer conference. I think my favorite thing by far with the trainer conference is, is one, most of us are connected either already through Zoom calls, social media, know, known each other over the years since we started this thing. But it's always nice to just be with everybody face to face. You know, yeah. you get so much time, even just talking about life stuff sometimes with these guys. Like, it's just that that camaraderie with everybody is is just nice to have. But uh, the the biggest thing is just you know giving another space where people can ask questions. There there is a big difference when you know even Zoom. Zoom's been great. The technology's nice. Um, it's great that we can do stuff like that nowadays. But there is just something about you know. Trainer University, you can be in the building, you can ask questions, you can see the way we're doing it. It's just more personable. And yeah. we, we have fun at conference too and stuff. Like this year, we took everybody out. We went to a bunch of the trainers came the night before. We went to the Detroit Pistons game um, versus the Cavs. So luckily, it was a nice game that we had players on the Pistons. We have players who are also on the Cavs. So we had to stay, see the players and stuff. Hopefully, in the future, it works like that too. We've talked about having the conference at other right. places, maybe out uh, towards the West Coast or down in Florida at some point. Um, but it's just a place where it's been really cool. Everybody's been able to come together, ask questions, talk basketball. And when everybody leaves, everybody just seems much more on fire, yeah. you know, for their business. Yeah. I mean, what the, the biggest report we always get is how much it rejuvenates them. Yeah. You know, it doesn't rejuvenate me because I'm constantly giving my energy in those things. Yep. And you are too. Yep. But it, it's, that's the whole purpose. I mean, our yeah. job is to give ourselves yeah. for this. Yep. And, and so, and they can come into these trainer conferences, learn, network, and it's really one of the ways we close out our year every yeah. single year. Yep. And it's going to be a huge part of I'm Possible moving forward is these yep. trainer conferences are going to allow us to continue to update everyone on the, on, on the changes in methodologies, yeah. the updates. Maybe it's talking about training tools. And even, even this year, I mean, we, we just took, took a minute to sit down with everybody and be like, hey, what, what can we do to help you more? What do you guys need more help with? What, what is it really that you guys feel like you're struggling with? What would be worth it to you guys to, hey, like if we could have this too. So we're always looking for ways to keep helping trainers and whatever issues they're having. Yeah, and I think that's where people really understand what, why we even did this to begin with. You know, because a lot of times trainers won't give yeah. because they feel like they're creating competitors. You're creating competition. Yeah, and, and I just don't believe that competitors yeah. are existing, existing mm -hmm. out there. There's yeah. too many players and players need more trainers. And yeah, so it's not saturated. We, yeah, it's definitely not saturated. Yeah. In fact, we need more. Yep. Now, the quality can go up, but that's yeah, why absolutely. We're, we are a trainer educational service. Yeah. And so we need to build up trainers and we need to be able to show them how they can reach those players. Yep. But that's really the most important part about this is we're educating the trainers yep. and we can reach more players. So the reason why this was built is because our mission in I'm Possible Training is to reach millions of players around the world. Yep. And we can't do that unless we build more trainers. Yeah. That's why we certify trainers. That's why we're constantly trying to grow them in, in their education. Yeah. And that's why we're also putting skill labs all across the country is because we need to reach more people. Yep. And so there's, trust me, it's not saturated. There's way more no, uh, players than there are trainers. We need more trainers who can go full time. Yep. And that's a big part of I'm Possible Training. Yeah. The other part that obviously our trainers get is they obviously get discounts yep. to our shop. So they can get discounts to our rip cones, our skill grip mats, mm -hmm. our med grip balls, every, our new rip lights. Yep. And so they have their discounts. And of course, th during certain times of years, like Black Friday, they got 40% off. Yeah. And so that's a huge part too is they get their discounts. But it really always comes down 
back to the community. Yep. So not only do we give them back to the trainer conference that they can get for free, but we also have our Facebook group yep. that trainers can constantly be networking in. Yep. And, and that's a huge part of this too, is trainers have to be able to have a place where they can talk to each other, yeah. where they can grow, where they can feel supported. Yeah. And that, that, that's what we're, we're all about right now. And I mean, it, it's been... I think it's been awesome lately just seeing it at the quality of trainers that are even coming in certified because I think a lot of people also know what they're getting into. But one thing I want to make sure everybody knows is especially in those first two, two, three months, I'm going to be there with you hand in hand. Like what we yeah. can have personal calls, anything I can do to help you through it. Like, hey, even if it's just walking you through the app, that's my main goal in those first couple months when you become certified, make sure you're fully comfortable. So you have the Zoom calls on top of that and stuff too, but I just want to make sure that, that everybody knows when you do become a certified trainer, those first two months, you know, we can hop on a call, we can talk about stuff, we can make sure that you're really comfortable doing what it is you're doing, no matter how big or small the question is. Yeah, and, and when you become an I'm Possible trainer, like we said, you don't. You can keep your own brand. Yep. It's basically a support system. Yep. It's when you're involved in this organization, we're there to support you. We're there to help you go full time. We're mm -hmm. there to educate you on our methods, which are skill enhancement. Mm -hmm. We're specialists in that. But all in all, it's about helping players win. Yep. And that's what I'm possible to continue to be about. That's what our trainer certification is. And if you want more information on how you can become a trainer, you can go to possibletraining.com. Um, you can obviously DM us on Instagram. Yep. Um, you can email dream at possibletraining.com. There's all kinds of information on our website and how you can get certified, how you can go to training university. Mm -hmm. But if you've ever even thought about being a trainer, yep. take a look at it. Yeah. Because anyone literally can be a trainer. If you have a passion for the game of basketball, we can teach you the rest. We already have figured out the system. Mm -hmm. We help trainers go full time. Um, and so you can look at the resume. We're out there. But if you've ever been interested, don't waste a second. Yep. Go look at certification. Yep. This has been Dream Loudly uh, podcast, obviously an I'm Possible original show presented by the Dream Loudly Foundation. Now, the Dream Loudly Foundation is a new foundation that's really set out to give players, trainers, and coaches scholarships and aid and resources to help them pursue their dreams. You'll be seeing a whole lot more about the Dream Loudly Foundation in the upcoming episodes.